Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well. And thank you for watching this clip on plotting a limaçon. My French husband, or the husband who studied French, tells me it's a French word. Uh, limaçon of Pascal. It turned out limaçon actually means in Latin a snail. That's the picture of a snail. All right, in order to plot this one, it's a pretty famous plot, so it deserves some uh, careful walking through. So in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at how to graph this one. Now, I started graphing this one, as any person probably would, by points. Okay, since it's a theta, uh, our equation is 1 minus 2 sine theta. I graphed sine theta here, recognizing that I need a lot of points for my theta. Um, I, at the beginning, I had a 0, 90, 180, 2, 20, 270, and 360, and then quickly I realized that was not enough points. So second round, I had a lot of more points in there, and I'll, um, next few minutes, I'll do a little more detail than this one. But I want to show you roughly what's the overview. How do you go approaching this one? So basically, I put a whole bunch of theta on one side, and I calculate R. Okay. Uh, obviously, I picked all the special angles because the sine theta is easier to do. As you know, sine theta and theta here, okay, if you have 30, 45, and 60 degrees, the trick is 1 over 2 and 2, radical 2 over 2, radical 3 over 2. So I used the special, special angles. And I calculated to somewhat a decimal point to get some idea of what's happening. And then this one is a really crude plot of my first uh, attempt how to graph this one. Starting at theta equal to zero, then I realized that as theta gets bigger, this r is actually shrinking. So the direction of the plot actually going counterclockwise is not quite intuitive. Anyway, so the circle goes out of this way, and then as theta pass through 180 degrees, 1 minus sine theta, where is it? Here, 1 minus sine theta, after 180 degrees, this one becomes a negative number, after theta becomes bigger than 180 degrees, thus explaining the circle actually expanding it, thus look like a snail. Okay, so obviously this one is pretty, uh, rudimentary plot. So then I went down there to Wolfgram to make sure I'm on the right ballpark. And sure enough, here is the computer generated graph. Okay, so starting from here, and we'll see why the curve moves down this way. It goes around the circle and come out over here at a 180. And then from 180 onward, it goes around the circle this way and come back all the way to 360. So it's a pretty elegant curve. All right, the best way to start this kind of curve, uh, you can go online and look for Apollo plots. Um, it's readily available. Let's see if I can zoom out so you can have a big picture. So basically, they gave you the R, that's the concentric circles, and then they marked off all the angles for you. It's pretty handy for our particular problem. Okay, so now let's get started. 1 minus 2 sine theta. When theta equal to 0, we have 1 minus 2 times 0, which is 1. So let's see, I marked off 1 is over here. So this is a theta equal to 0, r equal to 1. Okay. And then next the one I picked, 30 degrees. Oh, this is r. 30 degrees is half, so this is actually zero. So it went over here. If you're not comfortable over here, pick up 15 degrees, which I did earlier, and the 0 0.482 is the R. It's a little bit small writing. You had to bear with me. So anyway, so when theta equal to 15 degrees, we get over here. So now the curve is moving along this way. Okay, so far so good. Keep on going. When theta gets to 90 degrees, this is minus 1. Now, this one confused me for a while because 90 degrees is right on top over here. 
Minus 1 means I can't put a 1 unit over here. It's opposite. I have to go against it. So here's my point. After I got this point, then I start making sense. Say they equal to 90 minus 1 here. Okay, so the graph goes down downward here. Right? Now let's keep on going. Let's say 90 plus, let's say, uh, 30 degrees, which is 120. Okay. This one is actually, uh, for the R, is 1 minus sine of uh, 120. It's a radical 3 over 2. But let me make sure that um, didn't give you anything wrong. 120, and let's take a sine. And that's equal to, yep, that's radical 3 over 2. So this is basically radical 3 over 2 since it's 2 times sine theta. So this one it roughly is 1 minus radical 3, which is a negative number. Okay, so here is my, uh, what am I looking for? 90 plus 30 degrees. 90 plus 30 degrees. So here is where we go. And this is minus. Okay, so it's minus 0.7 or so. So I'm getting over here. As you can see, the curve is start curving upward. So it goes around and come around this way. And when theta equal to 180 degrees, we got 1 minus 2 times sine 180 degrees. Now, if you draw a sine curve, you know that 180 degrees here is 0. So now we have 1 minus 0 back to 1. Okay, now since pi is the, this direction, you don't go backward. So here is theta equal to 180 degrees, r equal to 1. And here's the point. So here's my curve coming out. Okay, now almost there. After theta become bigger than 180, we have into this negative range. Since it's y minus twice sine theta, okay. This one actually started growing. Okay, so that um, at a 270, we have 1 minus minus 2 is actually 3. Okay, so the curve goes way out of here. And then if you complete the angles in between, you'll see the curve goes around this way. All right? This is a lot to digest, so you can use the pause button. So hopefully everything I covered is enough to get you started. Okay, once again from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun, at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.